Nice to meet you. I'm Sang Su Jin from Brain Signal Processing Lab, and I will introduce our real life learning study. So, imagine us performing a simple everyday task. A massive amount of information is fed into our brains. We reason for the given task, take action, and receive feedback. Given the feedback from the current step, we would update our internal representations. However, do we have to utilize only the latest information? For example, we tend to retrospect our previous actions when we learn a new task. So, we hypothesize variable histories could contribute to representation learning and name them as historical representations. The 2019 summarized neural mechanisms to construct robust task representations. However, most studies utilize artificial and controlled tasks, which may not be able to fully reflect learning strategies in real life. A few years ago, we designed a novel VR-like paradigm in MRI using an eye tracker. However, we used panoramic videos as stimuli, so the internal, so the interaction between participant and environment was limited. Therefore. We need a real-life task where participants can freely explore and interact in the scenes. We summarize our research aims like this. First, we plan to implement a naturalistic fMRI task environment using Google Street View. Second, we wanted to design a difficult learning task with a hidden task structure and goal. Using this paradigm, we evaluate evidence of historical representations of learning in the brain. We designed a novel real-life paradigm called Photograph Per Paradigm. Participants visit five cities in five runs on Google Street View. They can freely explore the city following streets and capture eight photographs in eight trials. For each photo, a feedback score is given. Note that these reflect a conceptual similarity between the photo and target context. Interestingly, we set the same caption target for all series, and this was not instructed to the participant. This made the overall learning task quite difficult. Let's look at the individual trial more closely. From the start of new trial, participants fully explore the street and capture a photograph using an MR comparable joystick. Then, we presented text or voice randomly that potentially explain the scene from the captured image. Lastly, we computed the conceptual similarity between the capture and target and presented the similarity score as feedback. We used a multivariate deep learning model called CLIP that can compute similarity between image and text inputs. We analyze a total of 32 participants. We divide participants into the discovery and validation group to check the reproducibility of our analysis. There was no significant difference between two groups. And MRI images were acquired using a 3T scanner. We pre-processed the MRI data using fMRI prep, AFNI, and Nightpipe. We estimated beta values for all trial event tasks for the multivariate analysis. We have deliberately designed the paradigm to be difficult, so it is important to test whether the physics scores and task behaviors actually improved. To quantify task behaviors, we annotated target and non-target object in every scene and quantified run-wise capture probability changes. We use RSA for our main analysis. Defining model RDMs is an important step in RSA. We try to include historical information in model RDMs to test our hypothesis. For each trial, there were feedback scores and object detection data. We defined three levels of historical information for each trial. The current, model, current trial model only contained the current trial attempts. Recent two trial model group current and one-back trials, and recent three trial models include current, one-back, and two-back. Then we computed pairwise distances between two historical patterns 
for each trial pair. This lead to six trial-by-trial trial model items. Various historical model items were compared with the neural items defined in whole brain search right spheres. Note that we only focus feedback pa event paramaps where internal representation update would occur. For group inference, we applied one sample t test using AFNI. The resulting clusters defined by two voxel level thresholds were corrected. For the behavior result, we found a significantly learning effect in feedback scores for the discovery group. Although the improvement was subtle, feedback scores in round 5 significantly improved than round 1. We also found significant learning effect on task dependent behaviors. As the figures below, capture probabilities for all three target objects were improved. Interestingly, a non target object, BUS, showed a negative trend since it did not help to improve feedback scores. We found evidence of historical neural representations. Compared to the current trial model, Recent two trials model were rep was represented widely in the brain, including the ventral striatum, insula, hippocampus, and superior orbital gyrus. Similar clusters were also found in long trial, uh, recent three trials model, suggesting that our brain retained even three learning episodes. Most importantly, Historical feedback representations were replicated in the validation group. Compared to the current trial, both recent two and three trials models show replicated clusters like the ventral striatum, insula, and superior orbital gyrus. Historical representations also appeared in the task behavior models. We first performed RSA associated with object showing the significant learning effect, which were named SLO. Both current and recent two trial models show a visual reason. However, recent two trials model was also represented in temporal, parietal, and frontal ROIs, uh, suggesting higher order functions. This effect was clear on the SLO without person models. We found the fusiform gyrus, inferior or middle temporal gyrus, and middle frontal gyrus clusters in both recent two and three trial models. However, historical task representations were not replicated in the validation group, as the capture probability plus below the validation group shows dissimilar behavior patterns than the discovery group. We suspected some participant may not have learned the target context during experiment. In summary, we successfully implement a naturalistic and real-life task paradigm and shows participant can learn the difficult task. Furthermore, we found neural evidence of historical learning patterns in the brain and shows the reproducibility of historical feedback representations. Then why historical patterns? We think historical representations help cache and compare previous learning episodes. This could help from generalizable representations, especially when tasks have collision structures. Furthermore, we think historical representations are similar to the experience replay used in deep reinforcement learning, and this could provide a reason why experience replay is effective. One of the main limitations of our study is that we have a small number of trials per run. High task difficulty and individual variability would be associated with this. Therefore, we plan to investigate individual variability in historical representations. Lastly, all of this work could not be done without the support of our professor, my mentor, and all lab members. And I am very honored to introduce our works to all of you. And I have no conflict of interest in this presentation. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for the attention.